Check this out guys, it's been windy for the past two days and my canopy is just torn up. Wow, look at this. That's not good. This is a Harbor Freight car canopy and it's the 10 by 17 one. And I've already replaced it once. If you guys know where I can get the original car canopy, let me know in the comment section below. So far, I've just been using tarp. Before I start anything, I gotta take care of this first. And it's done. I moved the engine into this shaded area because it was just way too hot over there. One thing I forgot to tell you guys is that I actually rebuilt this motor. No, 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 no. It's not forged or anything. I actually did a poor man's rebuild on it. I just put new rings and new bearings into the engine. And uh, one thing I probably did wrong was I put the wrong valve stem seals in. The 2001 to 2004 actually used this hat type valve stem seal and I believe I put the older type in there. So I'm gonna be replacing the valve stem seals today. The valve cover is only held on by four bolts on each head. I'm going to loosen up the rocker arms first before using my power tool. I'm using a valve spring removal tool for dual overhead cam engines. I was thinking about buying a specific one for this engine, but since I already had this one, I just played with it and it works. I compress the spring here and use a magnetized screwdriver to get the valve stem locks. It's tricky but can be done. Sometimes you have to compress the spring several times to get access to them. After removing the valve springs, you can see the intake valve stem seal right here and the exhaust valve stem seal right here. Uh, these are the older type. You can see that it's a separate unit from the valve spring seat and the valve spring seat also moves on its own. You can also see that there's a gap in between the valve stem seal and the valve spring seat. So this is where I'm thinking the oil is leaking from, right here. I'm using a vice grip to rock the valve stem seal. Sometimes you do have to use a flathead. And here are the valve spring seats. Here's a comparison of the old one versus the new one. I'm gonna lubricate all the valve stem seals before I install them. Installation of the valve stem seals typically involves a 12 millimeter socket and pressing down on it or hitting it with a hammer. Being that the valve seat is part of the valve stem seal, all it takes is just installing the spring and it should set down onto the head and hopefully no more leaks. I'm gonna start installing the valve springs over here because the valves are actually up in this position so I can place the valve stem locks on there while I compress the valve spring. There goes number one. Looking at these cylinders, you can see that the valves are not raised up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the pulley so that the piston can push the valve up the valve stem seal. Notice that the valve stems are up now and that's because I cranked the crankshaft, causing the piston to move up in the cylinder, and that also raised the valve stems outwards. The new valve stem seals have been installed. 
the rocker arms require 22 foot pounds, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to torque it to 22 foot pounds. Now I'm going to rotate the crankshaft 180 and torque them again. And that's it. Just repeat the same thing on the other side. Now that I'm done installing the valve stem seals, I'm going to take out the clutch and I'm going to pressure wash the engine. But first, before I do that, I'm going to be installing the exhaust manifolds on so that water doesn't get into the exhaust ports. After that, the engine should be ready for installation. The engine's all clean now, I'm just gonna let it dry. And guess what I just got in? The ring pliers. So the next video is gonna be the transmission. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.